Hi, welcome to Professional Certifications Channel. Let's break down RHI exam preparation, one topic a day for focused and effective learning. Today's topic is Hospital Acquired Conditions, HACs, in healthcare. 1. What is a Hospital Acquired Condition, HAC? Let's start with the basics what exactly is a Hospital Acquired Condition, or HAC? A HAC is a medical condition or complication that a patient develops during a hospital stay that was not present upon admission. These conditions are generally considered preventable and often result from inadequate care practices or hospital procedures. Common examples of HACs include infections, injuries, and other conditions that patients acquire after being admitted to the hospital. HACs not only affect patient health, but also increase hospital costs and can lead to longer stays or even more severe outcomes. 2. Common Types of Hospital-Acquired Conditions HACs There are several types of HACs, and each one represents a serious risk to patient safety. Let's break down some of the most common types of hospital-acquired conditions. 1. Healthcare-associated infections, HAIs, these are infections that patients acquire while receiving treatment in a hospital or healthcare facility. Common HAIs include catheter-associated urinary tract infections, CAUTIs, central line-associated bloodstream infections, CLABSIs, and surgical site infections, SSIs. These infections can be life-threatening and are often preventable with proper hygiene and infection control practices. 2. Pressure ulcers, bed sores pressure ulcers, also known as bed sores, occur when a patient is immobilized for an extended period, leading to skin breakdown and tissue damage. Hospitals can prevent pressure ulcers by regularly repositioning patients and ensuring that they receive adequate nutrition and hydration. 3. Falls and trauma Patients, especially the elderly or those with mobility issues, are at risk of falls while in the hospital. Falls can lead to fractures, head injuries, and other serious complications. Hospitals must implement fall prevention strategies to reduce the risk of injury. 4. Venous thromboembolism, VTVT, which includes deep vein thrombosis, DVT, and pulmonary embolism, P, is a blood clot that can develop during a hospital stay due to immobility or certain medical procedures. Preventative measures such as blood thinners and encouraging patient mobility can help reduce the risk of VTE. 5. Adverse drug events. ADs adverse drug events are complications resulting from medication errors, such as incorrect dosages or harmful drug interactions. Hospitals need to implement medication safety protocols, such as electronic prescribing and proper staff training, to reduce the likelihood of ADs. 6. Foreign objects retained after surgery. Another serious HAC is when surgical tools or materials are unintentionally left inside a patient's body after a procedure. This can lead to infections, additional surgeries, and even death. Surgical teams must follow strict protocols to prevent this from happening. 3. Importance of Preventing HACs in Healthcare Hospital-acquired conditions not only impact the health and well-being of patients, but also have significant implications for healthcare organizations. Let's explore why preventing HACs is so important. 1. Patient safety and health outcomes. HACs pose serious risks to patient safety, often resulting in prolonged hospital stays, additional treatments, or long-term health complications. Preventing HACs ensures that patients receive the safest, highest quality care possible and reduces the likelihood of harm during their hospital stay. 2. Financial implications for hospitals. HACs can lead to substantial financial penalties for hospitals, especially under programs like the Hospital Acquired Condition Reduction Program, HACRP, run by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS. Hospitals that have higher rates of HACs can face reduced Medicare reimbursements, which directly impacts their financial performance. 3. Reputation and Trust Hospitals that experience high rates of HACs may suffer from a damaged reputation and loss of trust within their communities. Patients and families are less likely to seek care at facilities with known safety issues, and hospitals with poor safety records may struggle to attract skilled healthcare professionals. 
4. Legal and regulatory risks. In addition to financial penalties, hospitals with high rates of HACs may face legal actions or regulatory scrutiny from oversight agencies. Preventing HACs helps reduce the risk of litigation related to medical malpractice or negligence. 5. Cost of care. Hospital-acquired conditions can increase the cost of care, as patients may require additional treatments, medications, or surgeries to address complications. This places a financial burden on both patients and healthcare providers, leading to higher healthcare costs overall. 4. Strategies to Prevent Hospital-Acquired Conditions HACs While HACs are preventable, healthcare organizations must implement comprehensive strategies to reduce their occurrence. Let's explore some effective strategies for preventing HACs in hospitals. 1. Infection Control Practices Implementing strict infection control practices, such as hand hygiene, sterilization of medical equipment, and the use of personal protective equipment, PPE, is crucial for reducing healthcare-associated infections, HAIs. Regular staff training and monitoring of infection control protocols can help ensure compliance. 2. Pressure ulcer prevention protocols. Hospitals should develop protocols for preventing pressure ulcers, including regular patient repositioning, use of pressure-relieving devices and ensuring that patients receive proper nutrition and hydration. Early detection and treatment of skin breakdown are also essential in preventing the development of severe ulcers. 3. Fall Prevention Programs Implementing fall prevention programs can reduce the risk of patient falls and related injuries. These programs often include fall risk assessments, bed alarms, and mobility assistance for at-risk patients. Educating both staff and patients about fall prevention is critical for reducing incidents. 4. Venous thromboembolism, VTE, prevention. Hospitals should implement strategies to prevent VTE, such as administering blood thinners, encouraging early patient mobility, and using compression devices for patients at risk of developing blood clots. Regular patient assessments help identify those at higher risk. 5. Medication Safety Initiatives Preventing Adverse Drug Events ADEs, requires the implementation of medication safety protocols, such as using electronic prescribing systems to reduce errors, conducting regular medication reconciliation, and providing staff training on safe medication administration. 6. Surgical Safety Checklists Using surgical safety checklists ensures that surgical teams follow consistent protocols for preparing and completing procedures helping to prevent foreign objects from being left inside the patient's body. Implementing a thorough count of surgical tools and materials is a critical component of this process. 5. The Role of the Hospital Acquired Condition Reduction Program, HACRP The Hospital Acquired Condition Reduction Program, HACRP, established by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, plays a key role in encouraging hospitals to prevent HACs. Let's take a closer look at how this program works and its impact on hospitals. 1. HACRP Overview The HACRP was created under the Affordable Care Act, ACA, and aims to improve patient safety by reducing the occurrence of hospital-acquired conditions. Under this program, hospitals are evaluated based on their performance on a set of quality measures related to HACs, such as rates of healthcare-associated infections and patient safety events. 2. Financial penalties. Hospitals that rank in the bottom 25% for HAC performance are subject to financial penalties, including a reduction in Medicare reimbursements. These penalties are designed to incentivize hospitals to implement best practices for preventing HACs and improve patient outcomes. 3. Public reporting of HAC rates. The HACRP promotes transparency by making hospital performance data publicly available through the CMS Hospital Compare website. This allows patients and the public to see how hospitals perform in terms of preventing HACs, further motivating hospitals to improve their safety practices. 4. Continuous Improvement Hospitals that participate in the HACRP are encouraged to continuously monitor and improve their performance on HAC-related measures. This includes implementing quality improvement initiatives, conducting root cause analyses of HACs, and regularly reviewing safety protocols. 
6. Best Practices for Reducing HACs in Hospitals To effectively reduce the risk of HACs, hospitals must follow best practices that focus on patient safety and care quality. Let's explore some of the most effective approaches. 1. Foster a culture of safety. Creating a culture of safety within the hospital is critical to preventing HACs. This involves encouraging open communication, reporting of errors and near misses, and a commitment from leadership to prioritize patient safety. When staff feel supported, they are more likely to follow safety protocols and speak up about potential risks. 2. Engage patients and families. Engaging patients and their families in the care process can help prevent HACs. Educating patients about their care plans, infection prevention practices, and fall prevention measures can empower them to participate in their own care and alert staff to potential issues. 3. Utilize data analytics. Hospitals should leverage data analytics to monitor HAC rates and identify trends or areas for improvement. By analyzing data on infections, falls, and other HACs, hospitals can implement targeted interventions to reduce their occurrence. 4. Continuous staff training and education. Regular staff training on infection control, fall prevention, medication safety, and other relevant areas ensures that healthcare professionals are up to date on best practices. Ongoing education helps reinforce the importance of preventing HACs and maintaining patient safety. 5. Interdisciplinary collaboration, promoting collaboration among healthcare teams, including physicians, nurses, infection control specialists, and pharmacists, ensures a holistic approach to preventing HACs. Interdisciplinary collaboration improves communication, decision-making, and care coordination. Conclusion In conclusion, hospital-acquired conditions, HACs, are preventable complications that can have serious consequences for both patients and healthcare organizations. By implementing effective prevention strategies, hospitals can reduce the risk of HACs, improve patient safety, and ensure compliance with quality standards.